Sense relations may be defined as relations that hold between the predicates in a sentence. Or, as Matthew defined them, they refer to relationships in meaning between the lexical units within the semantic system of language. Now, sense relations are divided into two categories. First, sense relations of similarities, which are synonymy, paraphrase, hyponymy, and entailment. Number two, sense relations of dissimilarities, which are antonymy, ambiguity, polysemy, and homonymy. We will start with the sense relationships of similarities, and specifically synonymy. Synonymy is the relationship that holds between two predicates or more that have the same sense. Generally, synonymy is defined as sameness in meaning, but to be more particular, we have to define it this way. For example, the word change has many synonyms like edit, exchange, transform, adjust, shift, switch, translate, transform, transmit, alter, redo, reshape, etc. Now, all of these words are synonyms for the word change and they could be synonyms of each other. More examples on synonymy were tall and long, stubborn, obstinate, brigand, bandit, fast, quick, politician, statesman, answer, reply. It is noteworthy to mention that real synonymy does not exist, which means that there is no such thing as exact, identical, true, 100% synonyms. We can never find two predicates with the same exact sense. We only have near synonyms, which means that we cannot find two predicates which have 100% the same meaning. There should be some different difference between them. For example, the, the words or the predicates answer and reply, they are near synonyms. They are not 100% synonyms or exact synonyms. However, they are, not, they are near synonyms but not exact synonyms because they cannot be used in the same context all the time. For example, we say, I will write a reply to his email, but you cannot say, I will write an answer to his email. You can say, answer all the exam questions, but you cannot say, reply all the exam questions. The notions of synonymy and sense are in the interdependent. They depend on each other. You cannot understand one without understanding the other. Again, we shall stick to clear cases, not borderline cases, where we have problems, where we have confusion, where the case is not 
is vague and fuzzy. We deal with the conceptual meaning of the predicates, not the stylistic or the social associations a predicate may have. For example, children and kids, they are synonyms, but they differ in style. They have the same meaning, the same sense, but they differ in style. One of them is formal, which is children, and one of them is informal, which is kids. Statesmen and politician, they have the same meaning, but they differ in connotation. Uh, fall and autumn, same meaning, but they differ in dialectal association. One of them is used in England, and the other one is used in, uh, uh, fall is used in America, American English, and autumn is used in British English. Horse and nay, they have the same meaning, but different in style. Remember that synonymy is a relationship between predicates, not words, because a word may have more than one sense, and each distinct sense of a word is a predicate. For example, the word hide has more than one predicate. Hide one, which is predicate one, meaning conceal, and hide two, it is a noun, which means the place where you can hide. Now, in the sentence, the thief tried to hide the evidence. The predicate hide here is synonymous with hide one, not hide two, because it is a verb, not a noun, and the meaning here is to conceal something, to hide something. Let us consider the following two examples. Jenkins is our postman and Jenkins is our mailman. Here, the predicates postman and mailman are synonymous. They are synonyms of each other. However, in the sentences, Jenkins is our postman and Jenkins is a man who delivers our mail. Postman and a man who delivers our mail are not synonymous. They are not synonyms of each other because synonyms have to be of a single lexeme and of the same weight. Synonymy could hold between words having the same part of speech or words having different parts of speech. For example, on the first type, the words profound and deep, which are both adjectives, shift and switch, which are verbs, quickly and rapidly, which are adverbs, and mercury and quicksilver, which are nouns. On the second type, sleeping and asleep. Sleeping is a verb, whereas asleep is an adjective, and they are both synonymous of each other. This means that the sense of the word does not depend on its part of speech. The second sense relation of similarity is paraphrase. A paraphrase is, is a sentence that expresses the same proposition as another sentence, i.e. two sentences with the same proposition. For example, girls with red hair are preferred by unmarried men. Bachelors prefer red-haired girls. These two sentences are considered paraphrases of each other because they both express the same proposition. Or we can say that A is a paraphrase of B and vice versa. In the second example, John sold a book to Rick and Rick bought a book from John, these two sentences are also paraphrases of each other. Notice that if A is true, then B must be true, and vice versa. Let us consider more examples on paraphrase. Example one. In example one, all these four sentences are paraphrases of each other. 
because like you see, they all have the same proposition. And we can also say that A is a paraphrase of, of D, and D is a paraphrase of A. B, B is a paraphrase of D, and D is a paraphrase of B. C is a paraphrase of A, and A is a paraphrase of C, and so on and so forth. In example two, these two sentences are also paraphrases of each other. The cat chased the, the rat, and the rat was chased by the cat because they both have the same proposition. The third type of sense relationships of similarities is hyponymy, which is a sense relationship between predicates such that the meaning of one predicate is included in the meaning of the other predicate. Hyponymy is also called the relationship of inclusion. Example, man and male, the meaning of male is included in the meaning of man, or we can say that the meaning of the predicate male includes the meaning of the predicate man. Here, the predicate man is called hyponym, whereas the predicate male is called the superordinate or hypernym i.e. man is a kind of male. We can say man is a kind of male. Now, the hypernym is the more general term, and the hyponym is the more specific term. To look at more examples, cat and animal, the meaning of the predicate animal is included in the meaning of the predicate cat or the meaning of animal includes the meaning of cat. We can say that cat is a kind of animal. Here, the hypernym is animal and the hyponym is cat. In the second example, scarlet and red, the meaning of the predicate red is included in the meaning of the predicate scarlet. Or we can say that the meaning of red includes the meaning of scarlet. Red, i.e. scarlet, is a kind of red. And we can say that red is the superordinate or the hypernym, whereas scarlet is the hyponym. Apple and fruit are also a hyponym and a hypernym. The meaning of fruit is included in the meaning of apple fruit is a fruit is the superordinate term or the hypernym whereas apple is the hyponym apple is a kind of fruit in this example the predicate color is the hypernym which has four hyponyms purple red blue and green and notice that the hyponym purple could be a hypernym for other predicates like crimson violet and lavender one more thing purple red blue and green can be called call hyponyms Synonymy can be seen as a special case of hyponymy. In this case, it is called symmetrical hyponymy. For example, quicksilver and mercury, which have the same meaning and refer to the same thing, they are hyponyms of each other. So the rule says if X is a hyponym of Y and Y is a hyponym of X, then X and Y are synonyms. So in this example, quick silver is a hyponym of mercury 
and mercury is a high polymer of quicksilver. <coughs> so we call this process a symmetrical hyponymy. Entailment is the fourth type of sense relations of similarity. Generally, entailment is the relationship between sentences whereby one sentence will be true if all other ones are also true. Entailment is the principle that under certain conditions the truth of under the truth of one statement follows from the truth of another statement. In other words, a proposition X entails a proposition Y if the truth of Y follows necessarily from the truth of X. In other words, a sentence expressing proposition X entails a sentence expressing preposition proposition Y if the truth of Y follows necessarily from the truth of X. Look at these examples. In the first column, we have proposition X. And in the second column, we have proposition Y. John ate an apple entails that John ate fruit. Of course, the truth of Y follows necessarily from the truth of X. If X is true, then Y must be true. John ate fruit entails that John ate something. Hamid killed a dog entails that Hamid killed an animal. And it also entails that the dog is dead. Ala went to Amman entails that Ala went somewhere. Mu'min bought a Ferrari entails that Mu'min is rich. My friend is in the hospital entails that my friend is sick. We can never think of a situation where X is true and Y is false. If X is true, then Y must be true. I.e. X and Y must both be true. Because the truth of Y follows necessarily from the truth of X. For example, if we say John ate Mensef, this sentence entails that John, that someone ate something. If it is true that John ate Mensef, then it is true that someone ate something. Entailment applies cumulatively, i.e., if X entails Y and Y entails Z, then X entails Z. Look at the following example. Some boy ran down the street entails that some kid ran down the street, which in turn entails that some kid went down the street. Since X entails Y and Y entails Z, then X entails Z. Relationship between paraphrase and entailment. Two sentences are said to be paraphrases of each other if and only if they have exactly the same set of entailments. Therefore, whenever one is true, the other one must be true. For example, John and Mary are twins entails that Mary and John are twins. And Mary and John are twins entails that Mary and John, that John and Mary are twins. Therefore, John and Mary are twins is a paraphrase of Mary and John are twins. Let's consider more examples on the relationship between paraphrase and entailment. For example, the sentence, it is hard to fix electric cars, entails that electric cars are hard to fix. And since these two sentences have the same set of entailments, then they are paraphrases of each other. 
And this applies also to sentence number two. Now let's look at the relationship between hyponymy and entailment. If we look at the words in column A and the words in column B, we will notice that the words in column A are hyponyms of the words in column B, and the words in column B are the hyponym for the words in column A. If we also look at the sentences in column A and the sentences in column B, we will see that the sentences in column A entail the sentences in column B. The information in the last two slides leads us to the basic rule of entailment, which states that if we have two sentences A and B, which are identical in everything except that sentence A contains the word X and sentence B contains the word Y, then X is a hyponym and X is a hyponym of Y, then sentence A entails sentence B. In the examples below, the sentences in A and the sentences in B are identical in everything except that sentences A contain a word X, in this case tulip, dog, money, and man, and sentences B contain a word Y, which are flower, animal, money, and male. And the words in A are hyponym are hyponyms of the word in B then A entails B. Then sentence A, sentences A in A entails the sentences in B. However, there are exceptions to this basic rule of entailment. <coughs> the first exception, when we have negative sentences, when the negative particle not is involved, in this case, the sentences in column B entail the sentences in column A. There is also another exception to the rule, which is, which is the inclusion of all. When the quantifier all is involved, in this case, the sentences in column B entail the sentences in column A. The third exception to this basic rule of entailment is when we have gradable words such as big, tall, beautiful, small, expensive. And we call them gradable because they can be graded. For example, we can say big, bigger, biggest, beautiful, more beautiful, and the most beautiful. In this case, there is no entailment relationship between the sentences as you can see in examples in the examples below <clears throat>